Scientists, archaeologists, and history buffs would probably give anything to be able to climb into a time machine and answer a tantalizing question. How did the ancient Egyptians manage to create their colossal pyramids without the use of modern technology? What's more, did the stone giants really only serve as oversized pharaoh's tombs? Or did they perhaps have a completely different purpose? Well, the good news is that there's no need to wait for the invention of time machines to crack these centuries-old mysteries. To understand how the pyramids were built, we simply need to look closely and to uncover the original purpose. All we need to do is accept that everything we thought we knew about ancient Egypt is wrong. How long does it actually take to turn the wheel of time back 4,500 years? Well, not half an hour, because if you get into your car and onto the subway in Cairo, it only takes a few minutes to walk through the gateway to millennia long gone. Once on the world-famous Giza Plateau, visitors are presented with a sight that they will probably never forget. The stone giants of the Egyptians are not only among the most impressive, but also the most enigmatic buildings of antiquity. However, even among the most impressive monuments, the Pyramids of Khufu still stands out as it is the most imposing of all ancient Egyptian tombs and is often simply referred to as the Great Pyramid. And for good reason. With an original height of 146.6 meters, the Pyramid of Khufu was considered the tallest building in the world for more than 4,000 years. Today, the wonder of the ancient world still towers a good 138 meters above its surroundings, but the unique structure has not only lost height over the centuries, the entire pyramid was once encased in a cladding of gleaming white Tura limestone, but this was almost completely removed in the Middle Ages. The magnificent top of Khufu's pyramid formed the so-called Pyramidion, but even this keystone, which was probably made of granite or basalt, is still missing today. As mentioned, according to conventional wisdom, the pyramid of Khufu was the breathtaking final resting place of the eponymous ruler Khufu at least according to some inscriptions. But that's about it. The skeptics, who have their problems with the pharaonic tomb theory, emphasize that neither mystical funerary texts nor precious grave goods, let alone a mummy, were found here. The only thing that further supports the conservative historian's thesis is a sarcophagus. Well, or at least something that somehow resembles a sarcophagus. The long-established researchers explain the lack of artifact finds with the work of grave robbers, who probably entered the pyramid in pharaonic times to plunder it completely. However, it is uncertain whether the building has really been completely robbed of its treasures because we have only explored a small fraction of it so far. You will no doubt remember how the researchers announced last year that they had found a new, previously unknown chamber in the Pyramid of Khufu. However, what the cavity, which is over 2 meters high and 9 meters long, was once used for is unknown, as there are archaeological wonders that may still be hidden behind it. In fact, scientists believe that only 10% of the structure has been deciphered so far, and all that has been uncovered so far is a hook, a granite sphere, and a few fragments of wood. No one knows what other secrets lie hidden in the heart of the pyramid. But to borrow a well-known proverb, in this case, it might be enough to look the stone counterpart in the eye to crack one of its greatest riddles. Does this angle reveal how the pyramid was built? Thanks to technological progress, the next digital trip around the world is just a few clicks away. Gone are the days when the architectural wonders of antiquity were only presented to us in a blurry wide-angle photo. Today's high-resolution drone images allow us to marvel at the stone colossi in all their facets and to keep an eye out for any unusual patterns or details. And although the corresponding traces sometimes appear very subtle, they could hold huge potential for insight. So what do they tell us about this enigmatic construction of the Pyramid of Khufu? Well, let's take a look at a few photos taken directly above the top of the structure. We realize right away that the arrangement of the blocks is not exactly what we would call symmetrical. And the further we zoom into the shot, the more details are revealed. Whether it's the graffiti left by visitors over the millennia, the beveled surfaces that give the stones lateral stability, or the drill holes, each individual component has its own story to tell. It should be noted at this point that the contrast of the photos has been increased to make the details of the individual blocks more visible. 
The metal frame that marks the original top of the pyramids has also been removed. But on with the text. If we now take a closer look at the apex of the pyramid, one feature in particular stands out. Namely, a block of stone that is significantly darker than the others. It is unlikely that this is because it is a different composition. Other images suggest that it may have been damaged or stained by a fire or some other incident. Let's view out a little at this point to view the tip in its entirety. From this perspective, the surface structure presents itself as a large hole. And now it's your turn. Because there is an exciting secret hidden in the middle of the blocks, an inconspicuous detail that could tell us a lot about the construction of the Pyramid of Khufu. So press pause and see if you can track it down. A little hint first, pay close attention to the direction in which the individual stones are pointing. Is it really just a jumble of rough edged blocks? Or is there a pattern or a relationship in which they are arranged in relation to each other? Before we tell you the answer, one last tip. Pay attention to how the outer stones differ from those in the middle. And now pause our video for a moment and see what catches your eye. What's the story behind these amazing deviations? And that's enough torture. On the flattened summit of the pyramid, the curb stones are all almost perfectly aligned with the base. In other words, their edges correspond exactly to the alignment specified by the overall structure. However, things are slightly different in the case of the inner blocks. These have a common clockwise rotation of around 5 to 10 degrees. If we mark the individual areas in color, this deviation is particularly easy to see. But what does this alignment pattern tell us about the Great Pyramid? Why did the ancient Egyptians decide to structure the inner stones in this way? Basically, researchers suspect that the Pharaonic Empire's inhabitants used sophisticated ramp systems to erect the giant stones. In view of this, it is therefore conceivable that the outer blocks were covered by a spiral ramp when the center was built. As a result, it could be that the inner stones were not aligned with the size of the pyramid, but along the ramp. The simplest way of aligning the blocks was probably to line them up along their edges. And especially with regard to their edge alignment, it seems as if the inner stones were placed along a spiral ramp. Some people consider the interpretation of this image to be very strong evidence that a spiral ramp structure was used at least at the top of the Khufu pyramid. The problem, however, is the extent to which the presumed technique can then be applied to the other layers of the structure. But once the special construction technique has been identified, the probability of finding it elsewhere in the same structure is dramatically higher. An ancient power station? Well, but we wouldn't be human if we were satisfied with simple ramp theories. No, things can be even more outlandish. We remember, with its gleaming white Torah limestone cladding, the Pyramid of Khufu must have looked like an oversized diamond in the middle of the desert once it was completed. And wouldn't it be possible that the pyramid itself also had a radiant purpose? But one thing at a time. In principle, light can be generated by any system as long as it can emit charged particles into the ionosphere. The dancing auras also work according to the same principle. As soon as high energy charged particles hit the Earth's atmosphere and interact with the Earth's magnetic field, a breathtaking spectacle of light is created in the sky. In order to create a structure that could be used as a light source, the Egyptians had to use a material with high conductivity, which requires a high frequency. And indeed, when the limestone from the Abu Rawash area was scientifically analyzed, the researchers realized that its conductivity improved at higher frequencies, to a point where it was finally classified as exceptional. However, for a structure to emit high frequency radiation, it must also be surrounded by a large landmass. This is a basic rule of thumb that every antenna designer should be familiar with. And assuming that the Pyramid of Khufu was really intended to emit electromagnetic radiation on the scale of the entire planet, what better location than the geographical center of the Earth? The electrons emitted by the pyramid had to reach the ionosphere. There is a gap of around 100 kilometers between this area and the top of the pyramid. When passing through the ionosphere, the electrons collide with the atoms of various gases and create a glow similar to that of auroras. The electrons, in turn, travel back to Earth via the planet's high points. When approaching the Giza Plateau, the electrons would flow through caves filled with water. 
The discovery of the corresponding case was once announced by Zahi Hawass and Andrew Collins. A further process then took place there, known as electrolysis, in which water molecules split into hydrogen and oxygen gas. This gas mixture then caused a great deal of air pressure to build up on the bedrock, causing the earth to literally tremble and create a booming noise. In this respect, it is interesting to note that many pyramid texts mention vibrations and tremors several times. However, the ingenious inner workings of the pyramid are also likely to have played a fundamental role in the generation of light. While the underground chambers were used to split the water molecules, as only the hydrogen was needed to produce light, the rising hydrogen gas gradually filled up in the Queen's Chamber and the southern and northern shafts. The mysterious Gantenbrink doors, which still puzzle experts to this day, were therefore installed to prevent the gas from escaping. As the pressure increased, so did the temperature of the gas, leading to a partial release of electrons. The copper clamps that adorned the doors would have conducted the electromagnetic radiation into the system. The hydrogen was then ionized. The purpose of the King's Chamber was to collect all the free electrons from the Queen's Chamber and bring them to the top of the pyramid. To do this, the granite beams of the chamber would have generated an electric field. What is commonly interpreted as King Cheops sarcophagus was actually a component for generating high voltage in order to ionize the hydrogen and keep the chamber conductive. But here too, although this is a plausible theory, it is completely unconfirmed. And even if the light source hypothesis is indeed true, some questions remain unanswered. Why did the Egyptians want to create such a light show in the first place? Where did they obtain the in-depth knowledge that was essential for this project? And why do we know of no record that mentions the spectacle of light? As we can see, many an alternative hypothesis ultimately only provides more questions than answers. And we are happy to provide you with new video content on a regular basis. So press your thumb and subscribe now to never miss an exciting video from us again.